Hello there and welcome. I'm Bob Proctor. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life more than probably any other one thing. But I want you to really think as you watch this video, okay? It's not very long, but it is very powerful. And there's something in here that is not taught in school. The first thing I'm gonna talk about that's not taught in school is thinking. I have a paper here that says thinking is a skill which can be learned just as we learn skills such as typing and playing the piano. Very few public schools offer courses expressly to teaching thinking. Rather, we are expected to learn and teach thinking as a byproduct of learning mathematics, reading, science, history, a trade, and so forth. And we do learn a lot about thinking in this way. The trouble is we learn our thinking skills in bits and pieces and we never put it together as an overall picture. If asked to describe what all is required in order to think effectively, most people would be at a loss to give a complete account. Thus, we are unable to assess our own thinking skills or systematically teach the skill of thinking to others. Now, I want you to think about your life. And I want you to think about your income. I want you to think about money. Money subject that is a subject that not a lot of people want to talk about. And when you do talk about it, a lot of people get defensive. They say, well, money's not everything. Well, that's sort of a ridiculous statement. Of course it's not everything. But money's important. It's very important in the area that it's used. It's as important as the food you eat, as the medical care that you subscribe to, as the car you drive, the home you live in, the vacations you take. See, money is something that uh, has nothing to replace it in the area that it's been used. Now, money is merely an idea. We uh, put stacks of stuff together. If we just look here, we put stacks of stuff together uh, that we call money. Now, I am going to run some pictures up here on the screen to help communicate my idea. I'm going to communicate graphically as well as verbally. And money is an interesting subject. You get stacks of it there. How would you love to have stacks of money? I think everybody would. Some people do, but very, very few. So let's talk about money. Now, think about it. I frequently ask the person if they come to work with me, what's the most you've ever earned in a year? I really don't care what the answer is, but I want to know what the answer is. Because when they tell me the answer, what they're doing is telling me where their mind is programmed with respect to money. See, our mind is programmed. You're working with a program, I'm working with a program. Now, most people are working with a program that someone else built. They're, they are the production of somebody else's habitual way of thinking. I'm going to suggest that you can rewrite the program. You can rewrite the program. Now before we get into the money too deep, back in 1970 Alvin Toffler wrote a book, Future Shock. And what he was doing was predicting what's going to happen in the future. And he looked ahead about 50 years. And he said, you know, um, the future is going to be a shock for most people. And he said, it's something that we should really think about. Now in the book, he made predictions that um, everyone thought were absolutely crazy, but they weren't crazy. You see, these were predictions of what he said was going to happen over the next 50 years. Now, I was working with Earl Nightingale and Lloyd Conant in 1970 when this book came out, so the book was very popular in our, uh, in our company, and most of us thought, this guy's smoking something. This couldn't possibly happen. But stop and think of what's happening with your cell phone. I can type a message here, and I can send it anywhere in the world. And you'll see it simultaneously with me sending it. If you would have suggested that in 1970, people would have thought you were losing it. Well, he recently came out with something. He said, the illiterate of the 21st century are not going to be the people who cannot read and write. The illiterate of the 21st century are going to be the people who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. They're going to be the people who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. That's called changing your paradigm. And I want to share some information with you. If you've already got it, it's really good to hear it again. If you haven't got it, you're going to love it. Because it's about money. Okay? And it's really about how to create all you want. 
you have to have multiple sources of income. You can go back to the ancient Babylonians as far back in ancient history as you can go, and you're going to find that the wealthy people all had multiple sources of income. I want you to think about these figures that you're looking at here. 3% of our population are earning 97% of all the money that's being earned. And everybody says that's unfair. Well, it's based on a law. That's really what it's based on. Our income is the harvest of our production. That's really what it is. But 3%. Now think of this for a moment. Some of those 3% are not very well educated insofar as we look at education. Some of them are functionally illiterate. They can neither read nor write. Now, some of them are absolutely brilliant. But you're going to find people that are absolutely brilliant that fall into the 97% category that have to split up 3% of the money that's earned. So why and how does this happen? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. You see, you can become one of the 3%. Now, if somebody had told me that, 55 years ago, when I first got into the studying of this information, I would have thought they were dreaming. But my income went from 4,000 to 175,000 in a year. And it was based on the concept that I want to explain to you here. It's a very, very powerful idea. It really is. But what we have to understand is that the earning of money is something that doesn't happen by accident. You see, you can belong to this 3% group by creating multiple sources of income. Now, as I just said in a minute ago, wealthy people historically have always had multiple sources of income. This isn't an accident. It's by design. You can design this. So I'm going to ask you to really pay attention here. And you probably want to watch this video a number of times. There is an absolute law governs compensation. We know that there's a law. If I let this go, you know it's going to fall. If I let this go, it's going to fall. It's not going to go up. It has to go down. It has to go down. That is an absolute law. It's called the law of gravity. That's a law of the world. Well, the law of compensation is a law. And it's very exact. I want you to really pay attention to it. Because this law clearly states that the amount of money you earn is in direct ratio. It's in exact ratio to the need for what you do your ability to do it, and the difficulty there is in replacing you. So let's look at these three points, one at a time. It's based on the need for what you do. You see, in my particular business, there's the opportunity to earn millions of dollars, and I have earned millions of dollars. Not because I'm smarter than the next guy, not because, uh, you know, there's an emotional or capricious God said, I think we'll let Bob have a turn. And it's not because I'm lucky. It's because I find myself in a field where there's a tremendous need for what I do. I help people become aware of what they're capable of doing. I help people understand how they're programmed and how to shift that paradigm. That's essentially what I do. And there's a phenomenal need for that. We have people coming into our business every day. We train people to do this. But there's a tremendous need. I've worked in Shanghai, in Kosovo, in Bucharest, in uh, Buenos Aires, in Rio de Janeiro, Melbourne, Australia, Singapore, all over Europe, all over South America, North America, everywhere I go, there's a need for what I do. When you find a tremendous need and then you develop your ability to fill it, you've got to become very, very good at filling the need. Well, do you know, I fell in love with this business many years ago. 